thank you for the invitation. I'm very honored to be part of this event. And like Martin, I mean, I was mostly interested uh, in SPDs. And it turns out that if you want to deal with uh, the general KPZ that Martin presented in the previous talks, you need to use algebra and you have to use this uh, concrimer of algebra. And uh, in this talk, I will try to go through uh, these uh, two renormations, the one uh, which, happen, uh, which happen in, red, in uh, SPDs, the one which is used for recentering uh, monomials, and the other one which is for renormal renormalizing them, which is more uh, equivalent to this uh, BPHZ uh, renormalization. And I want to interpret these renormalizations in the framework of Bogoliubov both type rec recursions in the sense that I want to give a precise meaning uh, that we obtain in the context of SPDs some uh, algebraic uh, Birkhoff factorizations. So this is a joint work with uh, Kurush uh, Ibrahim Ifart. So before going to the algebraic setup, I would like to present very briefly uh, two applications or two fields where you can actually use this, uh, this tool. So first, the one uh, which has more singular SPDs, uh, so you start with uh, here, I just write uh, an equation. So you've seen uh, an example with uh, generalized uh, capital equations. So I have uh, DTU minus the passion of U equal a nonlinearity depending on U and its derivatives, but also on the side, which is a space-time uh, noise. And the whole idea of reality structure for trying to, if you want to solve these equations, just give a lot of descriptions of your solutions. So your solution will be locally described by your y equal x plus a sum. Here you have a, your sum, a sum of Taylor expansions, where here you sum some combined objects that uh, Martin presented in the previous lecture. And uh, every tree here you interpret it as a monomial, so it will be uh, small in y minus x, where you use some map pi x. And uh, you have some coefficient in front of it. So given by this two epsilon tau x, so these coefficients come from when you do your Picard iterations in the equation above, you produce uh, perturbative expansions and you can grab some coefficient depending on the nonlinearity f. This is a Taylor expansion, so I truncate and I have some reminder, which would be a small one uh, x is close to y. So what is very important here is that I have a map here, pi x with a base point x, and this map sent decorated trees, which are these combinatorial to actually recenter iterated integrals. So it would be a stochastic integral would be a recentered around the point X. It's like a car on my decorated trees, if you want your Feynman rule. And this is uh, the map that you will be interested uh, to, to construct. So pi X is a recentering map. And or if you want to add the, the so-called model that has been used in reality structure, you need to add another map, which will be uh, depending on two points, X and Y. And this map allows you to, re, to go from an expansion around the point X to an expansion around the point Y doing, doing with this transformation. And the, cop, the couple, I mean, pi and gamma constitute what we call a model uh, in, the, in this context of a uh, single RSPD. It happens that in the context of SPDs, um, gamma is strongly uh, determined by the pi x. So the recentering map actually determine your, um, your, your gamma. This was the first, I would say, renormalization or recentering operation. Then you have a second operation, which is more familiar to you. It actually, actually this pi x tau, which are stochastic iterated integral, they could be ill-defined because you have some uh, products which are ill-defined. Of course, these product, products are there. I mean, they are in this right-hand side of the equation because the noise is a distribution, so you have problems to define these products. And so also this term will not be comfortable in that you need to construct it with a suitable uh, renormalization. For that, you need to act with some renormalization map. We will be learning our maps on, the, on your set of the corrected trees. And we do it in a way that we have a simple actions on this pi x, where we just apply first renormalization m, and then we apply this pi x, this recentering map. So obtaining these uh, simple expressions really comes from the algebraic perspectives when you have co-interactions between uh, the off algebra, which gives you this recentering map, 
and the one which we normalize. And this nice co-interactions allows you to write this uh, simple formula. So there are two um, renormalizations at play in the speedies. And I would like to give you how you can see them using this um, algebraic uh, Birkhoff factorization. Now I move to another application, which is more recent. And this was for uh, numerical analysis. So imagine that you have some dispersive uh, nonlinear dispersive PDEs, which are all that form. So here we have some differential operator. Here we have P, which would be a polynomial nonlinearity. And now the issue doesn't come from the fact that you have a singular noise, but you can have a rough initial data like this V. And the idea is that you want to derive an, an efficient scheme uh, for these uh, dispersive uh, equations at low regularity for your initial data. And it turns out that if you want to write a, a numerical uh, scheme that I developed, uh, I wrote with my co-author, Katharina Chas, what we wrote, I mean, actually, you can pick up an approximation of the, coefficient, the Fourier coefficient of your, of your solutions, and it will be given by a sum of a trees, like, in a, in a, in a, like for SPDs. And you still have the same type of coefficients. There will depend, this coefficient depends on the initial, uh, initial value. And you have some integrals, iterated integrals, but here, a numerical scheme. So it will be not the exact iterated integral that you will uh, construct by doing the picker iterations, but it will be an approximation of this iterated integral. And here we are taking a, a sum of our trees, decorated trees, but they have to, because we are doing this uh, in the Fourier, we have to incorporate the Fourier coefficient uh, inside the trees. So that's why I put, uh, this is a different uh, set of decorated trees. And as before, we have a, a character, PR, which moves from the decorated trees and the speed out is, and gives you uh, an approximation of iterated integrals. So this has the main characters. It turns out also that in that context, that from that character, you can build uh, another character using some type of uh, algebraic uh, Birkhoff factorizations. And this allows you to perform the local error analysis in the sense that you want to know locally if your schema is good at approximating well uh, your, your solutions. So these are the two, um, two applications. And now I would like to move into the algebraic uh, framework. So now we, we switch a bit from the applications and we come uh, to, the, to the algebraic uh, setup. Okay, so I start with introducing what I mean by uh, decorated trees. So we have that first a set of non planar uh, rooted trees. Okay. Then we have a set, uh, we have a finite set, this uh, calligraphic gothic uh, uh, L. And then I, I have a set of decorations, will be this gothic L times n to the power of g plus one. So this n, okay, what are the interpretation of this decoration? So here, for instance, this finite set will parameterize um, the, the differential operator if you have a system of equations. So then they will be associated to some propagators. If you want, they encode the, the propagators. And the n d plus one here is a derivative that you can put on your propagators. Okay, so you want to dissociate uh, the propagator and uh, the derivatives. And so now we're considering trees, decorative trees on, on this set of decorations. And they will be of that form. So I will have a, a node decorations, which will be this, this map. This map will take value into uh, n to the power d plus one, meaning that I allow to have some polynomials, like classical monomials inside my, my integral. So like, like x to, the, to some power. And I have an edge decorations that will encode actually all the propagators and their derivatives. So it would be a map from the edge of the trees into uh, the set of decorations D. Okay, and I take the linear span uh, of this um, decorated trees and I call it H. So I need to, to have a, a, a provide here a product. So the product that we use when I'm talking about um, having uh, characters will be the tree product between decorated trees. So at the level of the non planar rooted tree, it's just to join the root. Um, joins the root of the two trees, and then you do the disjoint sum between the decorations. So I want to, just below you see an example of, uh, of multiplications. So here I have one decorated tree, so I represent here on the nodes, here are the node decorations. 
here you have the edge equation is this, uh, this capital D. And if I do the, the joint root product, what happens is that, okay, you glue these uh, two roots together. And on the way, you add the decoration. So you have L, uh, you add it to M. So this will be our, our product for, for, this will be the tree product that we use. So these are the set of decorated trees. Now there is a, um, a symbolic notations, which I was actually introduced um, by uh, Martin Ero in this um, foundation paper on, uh, on related structures, is that when you have these decorated trees, we want to represent them with symbols, and then you have some grafting operator, this uh, I, uh, calligraphy I subscript uh, A here, and you take a decorated tree, and what you do, and you just graft this uh, decorated tree with an edge decorated by A, on this node. This is equivalent to, uh, is a similar thing to that uh, B plus operator that we use for the Gunkheimer of algebra. So you have this grafting uh, of the trees. Uh, and uh, if I have this just a dot decorated by K, I identify it as a monomial that I will denote X to the power K. And now my, sorry. And now my tree product, I mean, if I want to represent that tree using the set, this is two symbols, actually give you these expressions. So I can go it uh, slowly. So here you have at the root, you have M. So this gives you this X to the power M. Then if I go for the first branch, I have a calligraphic A, uh, A um, so decoration on the H. And on the top, I have this N. So this is X to the power M. And then I go on with that branch. It would be a calligraphic uh, I and have B, X to the power P and so on. Of course, here the product is commutative, so I could have written uh, in, a, in, in, in different ways. So we have like uh, decorated trees. We have a nice uh, B plus operator with using these uh, symbolic no, no, no notations. And now I can provide you the expression of uh, a Kohn-Kramer uh, type co-product, which should be appear in the next slide. No, first, before that. I need to, to say that we are considering um, trees, but uh, we have some truncations in the sense that we will not consider all the trees. We may sometimes just want to consider trees which actually will give you ill-defined um, iterated intervals. So you want to have a way to truncate. So you define what is the degree of a tree. So it's more related to the analytical aspects uh, of, the, of the SPDs. So one, you have one uh, assignment, which will actually uh, define on the propagator. So basically give you the, what type of regularity you earn by um, convoluting, for instance, by the each kernel or other, other kernels. Then you have a second, um, second uh, maps, which actually would be on the polynomials. So it depends which weight you put on the polynomial or which other space you want to use. So often in SPDs, we use a two one one scaling in the sense that uh, times counts double uh, in comparison to uh, the special uh, components. And then the degree of the tree, it just that you take the sum about all the, um, in all the nodes decorations, those will be the po polynomials one. So actually they increase it because they add regularity. And then you have to take the sum on all of the propagators. So here I have the, the thing that I earned with, by convoluting with, uh, with a kernel, minus I need to subtract the potential derivatives that could happen on this, um, on this propagator. And then because uh, we will be in the um, finite, I mean, this will consider also the space of positive uh, decorated trees, which are that form. Okay, it's uh, I put in brackets because you will see in a minute. So there are trees of that form. And in fact, I am asking that all of the branches which are exciting the root are to be of positive degree. So this would be in the sense that this I will have uh, can associate to it a, a nice projection, which would be this uh, pi plus, and this pi plus projection would be multiplicative for um, the tree product, the product I presented uh, before. So this is uh, the space that it is uh, useful for um, doing, for instance, um, the recentering. And now I come to the main map, which is a complete uh, deform the chart and timer product, which is given above. It looks very similar to the um, to the concrete product in a way, in the sense that you can see that this uh, calligraphic IA 
give you the same expression that you will obtain with a B plus operator. But there are some subtleties uh, actually, which makes it uh, study a bit more um, slightly uh, more complicated. In the sense that here I play with my polynomials. In the sense that are, these polynomials are primitive elements. Okay, that are given here to, to these monomials. And uh, I play with decorations. Here I have a sum over L in uh, n to the power d plus one. And this sum has to be understood as if you are doing as a level of the algebra, a Taylor expansion. So I'm taking uh, derivatives uh, on my branch, on my propagator. And then I have x to the power L divided by L factorial will be the classical monomials that you see uh, in a Taylor expansions. And in fact, so this was not done in the original paper of um, Reggie structures, but we did it later with um, Martin Herrera and Lorenzo Zambotti. In fact, you can consider this co-product with, uh, with an infinite sum, okay? You can keep the infinite sum, but if you want to give a meaning to this infinite sum, we use a big grading. So as a big grading, what you mean, what you will need to measure, of course, you will have the size of the tree. This will be one component uh, in this big grading. But you also have to in take into account, the for instance, the age decorations, because here, when you do that sum, you increase the age decoration by putting these, uh, these derivatives. So you can give actually a meaning to this co-product in this using the big writing, having this infinity. Okay, so now I'm saying that this is deform. So this is a, a recent work with um, Dominique Manchon actually you can really identify where the deformation happen. I mean, the deformation being the fact that uh, you add all these extra terms, having this x to the power L tensors, these derivatives on your, on your plenty tree here. And this is quite involved actually, it's not so straightforward that we need to use um, another product, which is not exactly the grafting of a tree onto the other, but uh, the plugging of a tree into another. And then you can apply, I mean, you can deform this product using these uh, Taylor expansions, apply some algebraic procedure, gang Udon, which give you an associative product. And the adjoint of this associative product actually would be this core product. So it's like the same procedure when you start with, a, that you apply it to a pretty product, construct an associative product, and then you can get your, um, your, co your core product. So this uh, explain how you can see this product as a, as a deformation uh, of the original Kuhn-Kramer uh, co-product. Okay, so this are uh, just for commenting on this map when you have mainly this uh, infinite sum. And uh, what happened when you look at applications in SPDs or numerical analysis, okay, you will not use this infinity. I mean, you will, will truncate because there are constraints due to your applications. So the first truncation, which is this corrections, basically what you do, you truncate here. So I put a projection here, my pi plus. So in that way, I don't want this tree of, to be of negative degree. So by putting this derivative, actually my degree is going down. So at some point I have to stop. So the sum will be finite. And then the subtraction will be determined by the degree, okay? And if I want to co-product, because this would be just a, a corrections, because here I will be still on H, I need to project also on the trunk. So on the trunk also, I have, I have to put this projection uh, pi plus, and this gives you a co-product. So I will not go into details, but if you think about the application I gave on numerical analysis with also these expansions in terms of trees, these projections in pi, with pi plus will be different. Because in numerical analysis, you are interested in having an approximation up to order R. And so you will uh, truncate, for instance, you will remove all the trees which are too big because they will be uh, of order uh, R. Okay, so this is, this, uh, this is a different uh, projections. Just to tell you that depending on the context, actually you can uh, play with this uh, product and adapt the projections that uh, fit more your, um, your word, I mean, the constraint that you have for an SPDs or single SPDs are not the same for uh, as for a numerical uh, analysis uh, scheme. So th that's why I mean this this object is very central, and you can uh, really uh, tailor it for uh, your uh, for your for own applications. Okay, so now 
I will uh, I will present the mail results which are in uh, in SPEs regarding this co-product. Actually, in the sense that you can able to construct uh, an antibody for this uh, co-product, and the map that presented uh, here, this one when you project on the on the right, I mean on your on your, make your expansion finite, it will be a right comedial for this uh, H plus this alpha algebra of uh, positive tree of, of trees of positive degrees. And it turns out that what the map, one of the most important map in uh, in HPDs, the one which is used actually for recentering your object in a recursive way, is a map called a twisted antipod. So you start to be in H plus, but then you exit and you go into H. And the definition of this twisted antipod also looks quite similar to what would be uh, uh, the definition of an antipod. But then uh, you see that you have a sum, the same type of sum that show up uh, at the level of the co-product, and you have some truncation according to the degree, and uh, you apply it on what should be normally the formula of your, um, of your uh, antipod. And so the idea, and this is what we claim at that time with uh, Martin and uh, Lorenzo, is that actually this twisted antipod give you an equivalent of these uh, algebraic Birkhoff factorizations. And now in the next slides, I would like to make this statement more precise and really try to match up the, the two languages. I mean, the one you use with this uh, twisted antipod and the one that you will use if you try to develop the classical uh, algebraic Birkhoff factorization or Bogolubov uh, recursion. So here I'm going through uh, what I will consider uh, as my uh, algebraic uh, factorizations and see how one can apply it to the context of this uh, twisted antipod. So I just uh, put here what is a framework. So I start with a connected uh, graded of algebra with a product delta. I have a right comodule structure over H given by H hat and this delta hat. I will consider character over H and also over H hat and they will take value into some commutative algebra A. I will assume that I have some rota baxter map, Q from A into A, and uh, this rota baxter map needs to satisfy this identity. Okay, so this is uh, an identity uh, for our Robert rota baxter map. And this rota baxter map will induce um, splitting of A into two sub-algebras, so one would be a minus when we apply Q, and the other one would be a plus when I apply identity minus Q. So this, this is equivalent for like, if you have theories in, uh, in epsilon, you just keep, the, um, you remove the pole part. I mean, this corresponds to, to this type of projections with your um, rota baxter map. So this is basically the, the different objects um, at play. And now I'm able to, uh, to stay what, I, um, what is my meaning of uh, a Bogolubov uh, type of recursion? So here we pick up a character in, uh, from H hat into A, and then there will be unique uh, algebra morphism, one from H into A minus, which will be basically what we call, um, I think it's called in the literature, the, the contra terms. And the phi plus will be the renormalized uh, character from H hat uh, into A such that for every element in H, so here I have my, uh, I think I forgot to say, but this is an injection of, um, I think it's here, I have an injection from H into H hat. So if I pick up a tau in element of H and apply some preparation map called phi bar and apply my Q, I got my phi minus. And then my phi bar is constructing with some type of recursion Recursion where I use three annotation for reduce uh, corrections. Okay, so this reduce correction, which is defined here, and I just remove the primitive part of my uh, correction, and uh, so I do the recursion with phi and with phi, and I define this uh, with phi minus. And if I want to get the renormalized character, I just take the convolution here between phi and phi minus where for the convolution, I'm using the co-action. And basically, what, why it's just called a Bokulubov type recursion, because here I'm uh, using a co-action. If I replace my co-action uh, with a co-product, I, I get an algebraic uh, factorization. 
Okay, then it depends what is your <laughs> definition of uh, algebraic uh, Birkhoff factorization. So here the recursion is built on this uh, reduced coactions. And what is also important is to add this uh, rotavax map, this Q map, which uh, actually will do the, the projections. Okay, so this is what I'm calling this uh, Bogliu of type recursions. And it turns out that uh, in the cases or the application that presented, uh, it fits well to uh, at least two, uh, um, two applications. So for instance, when I was talking about the renormalization of the model, uh, meaning that you want to recenter your, your stochastic processes, so this could be done, okay, you need to extend a bit your expectations, but uh, on, on forest, but you can think of Q as uh, at the expectation. And in numerical analysis, uh, Q would, will uh, project according to the frequency. So for instance, if you have uh, zero frequencies, then you want to, um, you want to remove this, uh, these terms. So this book, Q will project according to that. So in that context, it works well because for renormalization of the models, uh, it's an extraction contraction of algebra, which is connected. And also in numerical analysis the, of algebra will be connected. So you can basically uh, apply not okay, almost directly um, the, the, the Bogolubov Bogolubo recursion that I've presented uh, before. Okay, now it turns out to the alpha algebra that I presented, the one which is H plus, this one of um, positive uh, of trees with positive degree. Unfortunately, it's not connected because I have this X to the power K. I mean, I have all these monomials. And uh, one needs, I mean, one needs to find what should be the, the reduced coaction uh, in that case, because it's not only subtracting the, the, the primitive part, but what you need to do, what you have to do, to do in that case. Also a remark that I will not expand further is that um, while you have these co-interactions between uh, two renormalizations, this one recentering and uh, this one for um, renormalization, and uh, we see that they correspond to actually, uh, you have two twisted antipodes, you have two uh, Bogliubo recursions, and in sense is that you have some co-interactions between the two Bogliubo recursions, in the sense that you can start by applying the one Bogliubo recursion produce a, a character. And then from these characters, you can actually apply the second uh, Bogliubo of recursions. And the core interactions tells you that actually you can switch between uh, the two Bogliubo of recursions. So this is also something we can be a nice uh, interpretation of these um, core interaction uh, properties. Now for the rest of the talk, I will go to the complicated example, the one when you are not connected and how you, you need to deal uh, with this uh, problem uh, in, this, uh, in this application. We need to find a suitable candidate for a reduced question, and then we will be able to perform. Uh, so the kind of reduced corporate should be the, uh, the primitive part. In our case, because we have these polynomials, we need to subtract a bit more. So in the sense that this reduced correction will be given as subtract so tensor one, and then I need to subtract this big part. Basically what this big part says is that in fact, I put all these branches, all the part of my branches of my trees are on the right-hand side of the coproduct. And then I have all the play with the decorations in the sense that I can extract some X, I can put xk, which comes from the fact that I make And I have the sum over li, which are the potential derivatives that I can put on the different branches. And also combinatorial factors here. So what I want, I want to subtract all this part. I want to remove all this uh, combinatorial, I choose all this part, which makes sense because these terms are produced by these deformations. And that may, may the term you want to remove uh, when you con consider a reduced map. Okay, just one, uh, one justification of this choice is that at least on these terms, which were at the beginning, uh, this is why your of algebra is not connected, at least the reduced map is zero on that term. So the reduced map has been designed in such a way that it is zero on X to the power K, to the dot when you have these uh, K uh, decorations. So now we are equipped with um, this, um, this reduced, reduced correction. 
And now, okay, what I want to do, I want to introduce uh, the splitting and also introduce uh, this um, rotor backsum. So for the splitting, um, we look, okay, we work uh, as a, with a smooth model. So imagine that you plug, uh, um, you replace your singular noise by some approximations, some representations. So here we are like in C infinity, from R equals one into R. And what we do is that we fix a base point, the X in R D plus one, and you get the following splittings where R plus X will contains a function that vanish at x and x minus one would be uh, the polynomials which, whose coefficient depends on x, which are function of x. Okay, and then you have uh, the natural uh, rotor backstone map given below where I pick up uh, the infinity functions. Um, and what I do I here, I have some Taylor jet between y minus, at y minus x. So I just take the Taylor jet of f and I have some truncation here. I mean, I just uh, truncated because it's an elliptical object, I truncate. And this trun trun truncation actually reflect in the algebra when we truncate uh, the Taylor expansions uh, according to the degree. So this is uh, this Taylor jet operator. And actually it's well known that, uh, I don't know actually uh, we find in the literature, but you have this rotor baxter identity playing with these parameters when I have alpha and uh, beta. And so I have this rotor backstor identity. And I think it's been understood in the literature that you can actually extend this result of the Bogolubov uh, recursion with the rotor backstor identity to a family of rotor backstor uh, maps. Okay, so this is it's like you have, uh, this gives you a family of rotor backstor maps and that satisfies this uh, rotor backstor identity. So we already put uh, the framework. So we have this uh, splitting space, the splitting. We have the, um, the rotor backstar uh, identities. We have our reduced questions. All the tools are in place for uh, formulating the Bogolubov of recursion. Okay, so here we will, instead of, we we'll consider a family of, of characters from H into, into A, these uh, C infinity uh, functions. And here, these characters will be indexed by a base point here, this X bar. So we will see it in the next slides, but you have to understand this X bar as some a priori recentering. You know that inside these trees, I have some polynomials, these monomials, X to the power K. And uh, analytically, I mean, I can just interpret this as a polynomial functions, or I can say that maybe I want to have a priori recentering uh, of these poly polynomials. So I can try to recenter, or say that they're recenter around the point X bar and see if you cannot get some invariance for that point uh, X bar. So here I have a family of characters depending on this point X bar. And then I can set up the Bogolubov recursion exactly in the same way as uh, in the, my main uh, definition, where now I'm using my Taylor, uh, my Taylor jet uh, operator. So I have always my preparations maps, but now it depends on more points. So here I have the, um, the X bars, the, the recent, the a priori recentering. I have X and Y. And uh, so this gives me this recursion in terms of phi and phi minus. And here, this sum, uh, this is our three notations for my reduce uh, coactions. And actually, if I want to compute my phi minus, I need to subtract here, apply my family of rotor backstorm map. And this is where here you have, uh, you have the degree, I mean, the parameters of my Taylor jet is determined by the degree of the tree, by the degree of, uh, of tau. So this is uh, where this, is, this match. The, um, the properties that you will see uh, in your core product when you, uh, you take, you truncate according to the degree. And then I take the convolution product between phi and phi minus to get my uh, phi plus delta at plus. So it looks familiar, I mean, close to the, to, to the Bogliwa recursion. One need to be cautious because here I've introduced several base points. One base point was this X bar that I hope to get rid of at some point because uh, I want maybe to have some invariance property. 
And there is another base point, which is this X, which would be the, the, the point X in which I want um, my, uh, my, car, I mean, my renormalization to be recentered around, the, around that point X. So this gives you this uh, nice uh, Bogolyubov uh, recursion. So actually what you can do with that, so we construct these objects, and then, uh, okay, you have some assumptions, okay? So you cannot take uh, any, any characters, depending on X bar, which this is quite reassuring because if you look at um, like this, uh, the assumptions that you have like, when you try to design a, a model uh, in righty structures, one also needs assumptions on the characters. So one assumption which is very natural is the one that, okay, you want to say that this X bar actually is uh, recentering on your monomials. So I have xi would be yi minus x bar i. Okay, so this is what I tell. Then you have another requirement. You want that the dec when you tweak the decoration on the edge, when you tailor expand it in the algebra, this actually corresponds to uh, derivatives in, uh, in the analytical part, okay, in the analytical counterpart. Okay, so you want to match this when you add the decorations. This amounts to take a derivative on your, on your character. So these are very natural assumptions, but actually they give you an interpretation of these uh, decorations. And if you have these two assumptions, and using the Rota Baxter identity that you've seen before, actually you can prove what you obtain in the classical uh, Bob recursion is that this phi minus uh, is a character from H plus into uh, A minus X. And the uh, phi plus would be a character from H into A. And very nice result. We also show that uh, this phi minus, it's actually obtained by phi by applying the twisted antipode. So this is actually what you see in a ready structure, which was, this is what we claim to be the, 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 the algebraic bit of factorizations. So these formulations by a recursion actually make a peer or actually match the recursion that you will do with this algebraic object, which is uh, the twisted antipode. And you can go a bit further. You can also have a nice expression for phi plus with a preparation map. So be careful that this map will be multiplicative, uh, will be evaluated on planted trees. So a bit to be multiplicative here on, uh, on my term. So actually you can, um, from this recursion, starting from this uh, family of characters, you can show the character properties that you expect on phi minus, on phi plus, and then you recover uh, the expression for the twisted uh, antipode. Okay, so now maybe we want to get rid of the X bar. So getting rid uh, of the X, X bar, so this, uh, you have some um, invariance uh, property. So here you need a bit more assumptions. So basically you need to not only interpret the decoration uh, on the edge of derivatives, uh, but you need to make a pair what should be your, your propagator or your uh, kernels. For instance, here I make a pair the two index of the decoration, so these two, because one give me a, a kernel, okay? And the second one will give me the, de the derivatives on my kernel. And here I will plan the convolution with uh, the character apply. Uh, so you need to have another prescription of what should be your Feynman rule. You need to have the convolution structure when you are on, a, on the planted tree. And if you add this assumption on the top of the two previous ones, actually you can show some uh, X bar invariance in the sense that for phi plus, you can actually uh, remove X bar, it doesn't depend on X bar. Then you have some invariance for the preparation, the Bogolyubov preparation map, phi bar and phi minus, but they are weaker. That for phi bar, this would be X bar invariant on planted trees. And for phi minus would be X bar invariant on trees with zero node uh, decorations as a rule. So there are some restrictions. I mean, you don't get fully the, the dependence uh, on X bar, but for phi, phi plus you get it. So this is something you can uh, you can show, and now I would like to finish my talk with a final uh, remark: is that if you use mostly the, the language uh, of variety structures, 
what we were considering, it's like a character, which I did not by this called uh, face uh, prime, which were this character uh, indexed by this base point x bar. And normally, if you were in the context of the, um, of the work we did with Lorenzo and Martin, what you do is that you start with this character, you apply a twisted entity code, and then you express it with a convolution with your delta r plus, and you construct that map pi x, the one I presented at the beginning, to construct research integral. And we show that uh, in the process that actually the map uh, is uh, independent from x bar. And this would be the model. I mean, the, the pi x, this would determine uh, this map. And uh, finally, what you can say that these maps here, which are used uh, for constructing the model, they can completely have one-to-one -one correspondence between the map you can see in the in blue above recursion. So this phi plus will give you the pi x, and this will be your counter terms given by this phi minus, and you get the uh, x bar invariance for all the model. So this really match uh, the, the two languages. So this um, the conclusion of this um, of this uh, of this work that uh, actually this algebraic Birkhoff factorization or Bogolubov uh, recursions show up, I mean, is really there in, uh, in the framework of um, SPDs. Uh, and one to, can use this language to uh, reinterpret uh, the fundamental objects uh, at play in, uh, in reality structures and all the, the renormalizations. But it's not only limited uh, to, 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 to stochastic partial differential equation, even can be seen uh, the level of PDEs when one has to deal with uh, a numerical schemes. So this is a very nice uh, application. And uh, I started uh, research. I mean, I was interested mostly in PDEs or SPDEs. And it was really uh, unexpected, but very nice for me to be in touch with these tools, uh, this Conheimer co product. And little by little, I realized that it was actually a, a cent central object in uh, both uh, SPDs and maybe next in, uh, in this numerical scheme for PDs. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ivan, for your nice talk. Um, uh, other questions for Ivan from, from the audience? Feel free uh, to Yes, I, I would have a question about uh, these two Bogolyubov uh, recursions in co-interaction. Uh, is uh, do you have a general framework for this? Do you need only, I mean, a comodule B algebra and uh, a character with value in a Rota Baxter uh, algebra, for example? I think what you need is like to have um, co interacting uh, B algebra, which give you two um, character group of characters uh, which are can take the semi direct product of them. Okay. And then within that, you can actually uh, write a Bogolyubov uh, Bogolyubov recursion on this uh, on semi-direct on this semi-direct product of these groups, and you can try first to do uh, as well as you start by the the recentering, and then you do renormalization, or you can switch. This has not been really formalized. It was just a more general idea or an observation that we we got in the paper. But today maybe you can try to push. Uh, this formalism or this framework uh, actually on the co-interactions. Yeah, looks very nice, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I, I have a question, even though I'm surprised that I'm asking this kind of question. So going back from combinatorics to, to analytics, um, you know, in, in physics, one of the consequences of the, the co-product and these, these, uh, these uh, recursions is that it has some influence on on the analytic behavior of the function, right? So there's something like a leading log expansion or a normalist dimension. So by studying these combinatorics to learn something about some, some features of the actual solutions that, that, that are underlying this procedure that you're describing. So so I was just wondering, uh, maybe also to, to, to Martin in, in these two talks, I mean, on one hand, there's this analytic side, on the other hand, there's a combinatorial side, but is, is there any feedback in the sense that so far, we have seen that you use this to, to define what the well-defined renormalized solution is to these kind of equations. But is there anything beyond that? Can you, can you learn something about behavior when, when things become singular, when, when arguments of these things become close together or anything like that? Uh, I'm just curious if that makes sense. 
So you want, if you can infer from the algebraic part some analytical properties on your solutions or? I've, I mean, the simplest example in, in, in field theory is, for, is, is, is this thing called the leading log expansion. Yeah, so if you have a, if you have a Green's function, suppose it just depends on the momentum and then you want to know how does it behave as a function of momentum and then if you order it by powers in the momentum, then you get corrections by, by the log of the momentum. And you can, for example, tell that the highest power of the log, like the biggest correction at each order, is related to, to some simple co-product of some simple graphs that enter your combinatorial structure. And there is like a there's a way to order everything in terms of these kinds of corrections and logs, for example. So, so I'm just curious if anything, anything like that is exists also in this SPDE applications. But I have no idea what the analytic question to be asked would be. I mean, I'm just curious if there is anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a practitioner, it was more like uh, you have some problems, you have these analytical features, and you want to encode them um, at the level of the algebra because you want to organize your computations nicely uh, and to be able to, to drive uh, general results. But Think of, okay, I've seen recently maybe in the work of, um, of Martin was uh, for the support theorem was using some equations on the characters to infer some analytical properties. Maybe Mark could comment. But mm -hmm. this uh, this I think was nice uh, perspectives um, and from the from the algebraic part, or um, even he was able to show. That he has uh, it all given by some. If you have constraint on the constant, this is like correspond to some uh, uh, of uh, ideal your for half algebra. So, but it was it seems to be a huge effort trying to connect this what should be normally mm -hmm. analytical properties and to see them uh, at the level of the of the algebra. It's uh, really a tremendous effort, uh, at least for us. <laughs> so, I, I think for everyone. Um... But, but the kind of result is that, for example, you can relate the, the coefficient of a log. I mean, it does tell you what the coefficient is. So it doesn't really does the analysis for you, but it does tell you that a certain coefficient of a log is the same as another coefficient of a log somewhere else. So it, it tells you some information of, tells about how some information gets redistributed due to the nature of subtractions that are underlying the definitions of things. But I'm, I'm sorry for the super vague uh, rambly question. Um, uh, unless, yeah. I actually might. I have a question. Do subhop algebras play a role for you, for example, rooted trees, which have at most k outgoing branches at every vertex? So if k is one, these are just linear rooted trees, which never split, so to speak. Does such subhop algebras play a role for you? Well, you just have linear trees, like with no branching at all. Well, that would be the simplest one. Or if you say I just yeah, take root yeah. trees which have always two branches at most outgoing. Ah, two branches. You want to talk about a binary? Or any number. Would, would such subhop algebras play a particular role for you? Because under the co-product, this is closed. So under the co-product, such trees goes into such trees, tens of such trees. And maybe, maybe. There is something to be learned from that. Uh, no, for the moment, no, I don't see uh, any uh, okay. well, application. Well, I mean, I mean, when we con construct this regularity, I mean, we have this notion of rule, right? Mm. That sort of very yeah, simple. Yeah, so rules. that essentially gives you, right? Because so, so in these regularity structures, you naturally don't have all possible trees showing up. But you, you only have somehow, because they're the trees of, it's really more like the Feynman diagrams, right? Mm -hmm. So in the Feynman diagram, you sort of fix yourself the interaction. So you give yourself a number of types of nodes somehow, right? Yep. Um, and so here, here, the analog of the Feynman diagrams would themselves be trees already. Uh, and then the analog of that would also be, so if you give yourself rules about how things can kind of come yep. together. And then these sort of Taylor expansions, they are the ones that look kind of like the Conkrimer uh, Hopf algebra, so with these sort of cuts. Mm. Um, and then in this case, 
they would in our case also consist only of trees that have certain structure, right? So there wouldn't be all possible trees, but there would only be the ones of, you know, depending on the degree of your nonlinearity and these kind of things. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, if, if there are no further questions now, then let's thank um, Ivan again and all speakers thank of today. Thank you.